So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make the quadrifiller antenna for 2.4 gigahertz. Basically, the methods are the same as the previous video with the uh, 5.8 gigahertz. We're just using some slightly thicker wire for the elements. And of course, it's just a lot bigger. So let's get the tools out then. And I'll show you how to actually make one of these for 2.4 gigahertz. So the wire that I'm going to use to uh, make the elements is this uh, two millimeter thick garden fence wire. Now I've chosen this to make the elements because it's a lot uh, thicker and stronger than uh, copper wire. But uh, if it's a uh, weight consideration that you need to think about, say you're going to mount this on a quadcopter, this will be considerably more heavier than uh, actual copper wire. You can actually use the same uh, copper wire that I made the 5.8 gigahertz uh, antenna out of. It's just a lot more thinner and if you do uh, happen to uh, give it a whack on the ground, chances are you're going to bend this quite easily. So, you know, if you don't mind uh, doing uh, repairs ongoing, then uh, possibly you could make it out of this wire as well, just to save a little bit of weight. So the measurements that we're going to be working off for this antenna are uh, 126 millimeters at uh, 2.4 gigahertz and I've already cut uh, four pieces of wire to length for the four elements there and to measure them out again I've used my uh, straw or tube method again just uh, measure out a uh, straw something like this once and then you can use this to actually cut your wire multiple times. So we need to put a uh, right angle bend in each end of the wire and uh, we need to put a mark exactly one eighth wavelength in to actually put our bend in place. And uh, the actual one eighth of a wavelength at 126 millimeters is uh, 15.75 millimeters. So I'm just rounding this up to uh, 16 millimeters. So I'm now ready to start putting my uh, right angle bends into the wire. So I put it up right up against the uh, mark there and then bend it in that direction. And the uh, other end of the wire actually gets bent in the opposite direction. So we get the wire looking like that and you need to do the same to uh, the other three. So before we move on to the next stage you want to uh, clean off any ink that's still there and also get a little bit of emery paper just to clean up the ends just for when we actually solder them on later it'll be much easier. So next we're going to have to start putting our bends into our elements just like I have this one here and uh, what I've actually got here to help me is a uh, piece of plastic tubing it's uh, 37 millimeters diameter from edge to edge and I've drilled a small hole in the top here and as for the length of the tubing I've uh, measured from the uh, center of the hole that I've drilled here at the top all the way down here and it's 65 millimeters in length and I've uh, cut it off here and at that length with this uh, actual diameter it's uh, just big enough to actually get a half turn of the uh, antenna element there all the way down here halfway I've put a little mark here as well just to show me where halfway is but uh, this particular tubing you can clearly see the two halves when they're joined together in the factory so I'm going to be putting a bend in following roughly where my finger is going all the way down to the bottom here now when I finish this antenna this antenna is going to be uh, right hand circular polarized so if you actually want a left hand one you just have to do it the opposite way around from what I'm doing it in the video here so just start off slowly and try to get it in the middle of the tubing nicely spaced out with that curve and then when you get to the end here this leg just wants turning and you want to push it in there so it actually marries up with the leg on the opposite side and then just go back round and try and get that curve nice and straight with no kinks in so I'm happy that I've got that curve as perfect as I uh, possibly can do it and you can see the legs the uh, leg is actually turned in now and uh, it meets up with the uh, opposite leg on the other end of the element there so this one's pointing in and sells this one 
Now just as in the previous video for the uh, 5.8 gigahertz version of this antenna I'm going to be using some semi-rigid coax and this is 140 millimeters long so that should be plenty enough to solder the elements in place and also have a little bit at the uh, end here so we can bend it into different positions to how we actually want it. So I'm going to start soldering the elements in place now onto the coax and uh, just like the previous video I've uh, pre-tinned each of the uh, legs on the element here, the bottom leg and the top leg. I've also put a small amount of solder around the waist of the coax here where I'm going to be soldering on this bottom leg and I've also put a small amount of solder on the tip on the uh, inner core there that I've exposed. That's uh, probably about three millimeters that I've exposed from the top there. And just like in the previous video, I'm going to solder the bottom legs in place first and I'm going to do all four elements all in one go then when I've all got the uh, bottom legs all soldered in place. So again I'm using my tweezers to actually hold the element because the heat will travel up there and I'll just put a little bit of solder get the uh, heat flowing on that leg because it is a little bit thicker than the uh, normal copper wire that I used previously so a little bit of heat get the solder flowing and then it should hold it in place no problem. So I'm going to solder the second element on now and just as in the previous video it's a lot easier if you do the uh, opposite so I'm doing the opposite side of this element now and then I'll do the other two after I've got this in place. So I've got the two opposite ones in place so I'm going to start uh, soldering the other two on now and I put a little bit of masking tape around the uh, legs of these tweezers just to try and help them grip the wire a little bit better. So now that all four bottom legs are soldered in place, I've just manipulated the top legs there so they're just touching the uh, centre core of the coax there and I'm going to solder them all in one go. So once you've got all the elements soldered in place, you want to go around and visually check that uh, you haven't uh, got a short here at the top with the uh, outer braid of the coax. And uh, now we can also go around and uh, try and make the elements a little bit more even. So any that uh, are not quite right, just uh, give them a little twist and a little bend to uh, get them all nice and uniform. So just like in the previous video for the 5.8 GHz version of this antenna, we're going to have to uh, make a balance so that it uh, operates properly. Now, I've got here a length of uh, copper wire. It's around 20, 21 SWG thick. And we don't have to use uh, wire as thick as the elements themselves. So it makes it a little bit easier. And uh, I've measured off one half wavelength here at 63 millimeters. Now as you can see I've actually measured it off here on the copper wire so I've got some waste on this side and waste on that side that I can actually cut away when I've got my coil actually made. You just get uh, a lot neater coil if you actually uh, do it this way not trying to start at the end of the wire here. So I'm going to be wrapping it around this uh, metal rod here that's five millimeters in diameter so it's just a little bit thicker than the uh, actual coax the semi-rigid coax on here and also I'm going to be putting a uh, short length of heat shrink tube in onto this coax as well that the uh, ballon will actually go over the top because we don't want it shorting out directly onto the coax we just want it to be connected right at the end there and not shorting out to the body at all. So I'll start making the coil, just wrapping it around the metal bar. And then once you've got it to that position there, you can just pinch it in slightly, get those coils nice and evenly spaced out. They want to be about two millimeters apart from each other. So once you're happy that you've got it spaced out nice and evenly, we can remove it from the bar here and then we can uh, just trim away any excess copper wire that we don't actually need. So there's the ballad in place, it's just soldered on there and then uh, wraps itself around the coax and it's insulated with the uh, heat shrink tubing and I'll put some heat shrink tubing over the top of that as well just to uh, make sure it's protected. So I've put some epoxy putty around all the solder joints just to add a little bit more strength to it so all that's left to do now is to put an a, uh, SMA connector on there and give it a coat of acrylic paint. So here is the antenna now it's all painted up and I have to say I quite uh, like this particular design of uh, antenna and uh, I want to show you a little test now on uh, Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz 
and uh, I think you'll be surprised how powerful this actually is it really does pull in those access points it has a lot of gain for its uh, size and uh, in particular it being a omnidirectional antenna as well it uh, really does um, compare favorably with some uh, directional antennas so let's give it a quick scan then and see how many access points it can actually pull in so straight away there we've got uh, into the uh, mid 20s so it's not bad that at all for a uh, omnidirectional antenna I have to say so we're on 26 there and there's only a couple that are actually dead the rest of them uh, you know they're not too bad the uh, signal strength of them so I'm, I'm quite pleased with that it's uh, it's working great for an omnidirectional antenna so it's not a bad little antenna at all this and uh, I was quite surprised how many access points that it did pull in for a uh, quick test over Wi-Fi and that was just from my uh, window here in the lab so yeah it, uh, it's got the potential of being a good little performer so if you're looking for a circular polarized antenna to actually uh, push your FPV gear a little bit further then uh, you know this could be uh, the antenna for you so uh, I hope you uh, have a go actually building one of these yourself it uh, it is simple to build it's just that you have to build the uh, jig and everything to get the uh, bends in those uh, elements correct but apart from that it's a straightforward build so I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please give it a thumbs up it does help on YouTube and any comments or questions drop them below and I'll do my best to answer them and hopefully you'll join me on the next one.